Well, the Regents Arts Center on the University of Minnesota campus uh, is, uh, to me, a fascinating uh, effort to turn a building into a piece of urban fabric. Uh, some people find it handsome, some find it schizophrenic. There's actually, uh, I'd say, at least four personalities and four images that the center has. And for us, it starts because it's actually two buildings uh, that are across the street. And uh, our thought was, the worst thing we could do is make both those buildings look alike or be so conspicuously aligned that it would t too, be too heavy in the district of uh, that were really collections of different diverse architecture. So what we did was look at the context, the rest of the arts venues, the performing arts, the music, the dance, and we drew the sensibilities of those languages of brick and uh, lightweight stucco and uh, large sections of glass and heroic support of the buildings and took those attributes and put them in a bag and shook them up and added a few more things in it and you know dumped it out on a table and then like a collage arranged them in ways in which they create a kind of conversation with fragments and bits and pieces in order to actually pull the district together. And they also conveyed the sense that as you're driving through, you feel like you're already kind of in the building. So the building draws you in and uh, engages people in the display and making of art uh, as you walk by. So they've made the building itself an educational experience. In the arts, it is the tendering of relationships uh, in exchanges and uh, offering and receiving um, really the good grace of uh, thoughtful colleagues that brings you to a point of being can a candidate to basically design their house. My own interest and our broad interest as a firm was in complementary artists and designers working and thinking about parallel issues. We even started a group together of designers and artists that met once a month to share work, debate ideas that were in the work, etc. So these relationships didn't surface at the time there was a need for a building. They had been established much earlier. The owner of Regis, unbeknownst to me, was being courted as a donor, a lead donor for the building. And I had befriended him and actually helped him locate, find a site for a sculpture he had bought is actually a Frank Gehry's uh, fish, large scale fish that had been um, exhibited at the Walker. And he went and uh, without saying anything to me, in fact, keeping it a secret from me for months, uh, contacted the dean of the college and said, I'm just thrilled that you're really considering Marsha and Rock Castle and Garth has been you know, really important to my thinking and I wanna make a lead gift to the building a very difficult site because they had a site divided by a road. Um, and so how do you do one building that's essentially two? Um, and uh, only MSNR could figure that out, I think. I mean, I think most architects would have been totally defeated by that problem. Where arts education take place, there is a congestion at the end of the semester when all of the graduating students, the BFA and MFA students, get windows of exhibition time. It has to occur at the end of the semester because it's the completion of that semester plus additional semesters work. It's the culmination prior to graduation. There's a tremendous congestion. Well, what we did was take the amount of space they had programmed for that and tripled it by making these rooms uh, dissolve and transform, absorbing comfortably, more comfortably so that Every graduating student had more space and more time in that space to exhibit and do the work that was so important. Increasingly, large-scale and multimedia works are being done in arts education. So we created a number of venues and, first of all, fully digitized the inside and outside of the building where you could access the high-speed internet and very fast cabling. All the bones in the uh, front of the uh, vestibule are are open and tetherable. They're all made of the same hardware that scaffolding and, and the uh, work in a performing arts uh, stage are used. So affordable hardware and affordable connections and plugins all work from this same simple infrastructure. 
basically taking more of a theatrical uh, and performance oriented set of tools and infrastructure in a visual arts cultural setting, knowing that the hybridization of the arts was in need of this and heading in that direction. Again, it wasn't in the program, but we just knew the artists that are working there and some of the struggles and frustrations and dreams they had, and we provided these uh, qualities in the building. We even, even designed the exterior of the building so that you could anchor up to, I think it was 150 pounds per square foot, tether, you could tether to the building itself so it could act as an armature and there was a regular spacing. These ideas weren't just magically coming from our creative minds, they were really coming from these relationships and the questions and the interactions and the challenges that artists are known for asking and that we find benefits not only in serving them but thinking ourselves about architecture. And I think uh, this is one of the most amazing art school buildings anywhere in the world. I know of no other building that does what that building does. It's the first impression meets your expectations for grandeur, but if you come back to that same space a couple times, you're going to actually find it to be quite different because it's constantly being intervened on by uh, artists and people using the space for uh, f uh, free play and expression and interaction.